Y254. Imagine. It's 10th of June 2019. Many thanks for tuning in. I trust you keeping well tonight. A political eye on our topic today. Discussion Monday will be looking at the political drum beats that have begun and have been continuing. And we will be looking, is it right to have such a discussion at such a time? Should we have politi uh, political uh, or politics actually in such a period? Keep it Y254. I'll be speaking to Gonjuri Karaoke. Welcome to the program. My name is Dereva Hillary. For now, we look at the stories making news highlights. Now, a Nyaururu-based businessman has sued the Director of Criminal Investigations, DCI, for illegally holding his goods worth millions of shillings. Moses Mashori Kigo's case against the DCI filed at the court at the High Court in Nairobi is a continuation of a long-running uh, battle with authorities over contraband goods. Mr. Kigo has previously been arrested and released after the court found his consignment of sugar, rice and green grams genuine. Kigo accuses the DCI of working with the his business rivals to impound and detain his 13,336 kilograms of sugar and 1,295 kgs of rice in disregard of a court order. Through lawyer Itobu Manyara, Kigo, the proprietor of Mogo Supermarket in Yaruru town, claimed he has been subjected to massive losses by the investigators' unjustified actions. Nairobi woman representative Esther Pasari has finally broken her silence on Governor Mike Sonko's allegation that she had been demanding money from him. She said she would visit the Office of the Director of Criminal Investigation, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, and the Office of National Cohesion so that the matter could be looked into. Uh, the feud between Songo and Basari started during the Madaraka Day celebration when the governor told the Nairobi women rep to stop going around telling people that he does not answer her phone calls. The issue later escalated when Songo accused Basari of demanding for money during a, a live interview on TV. Uganda will invest about 768 billion shillings in restoring an old railway line linking Kampala to Malaba on the Kenya border following delays in securing funding for the standard gauge railway. The upgraded meter gauge railway line is expected to boost monthly freight capacity to 120 metric tons from the current 20,000 tons by 2020. 2026. The SGR opened to passengers in May 2017 and to freight in January 2018. It is now uncertain whether Uganda's joint plan with Kenya and Rwanda conceived six years ago to build a standard gauge railway SGR that connects East Africa's landlocked nations to the Kenya port of Mombasa will come to fruition. In recent months, the SGR project has faced major financing challenges after the Chinese Exim Bank exits major major benefactor delayed financing of the third and last segment of the Kenya section from Naivasha in the heart of the Rift Valley to Malaba on the border with Uganda. Leaders drawn from Taita Taveta are calling for the immediate interdiction of national government administration officials that have failed to crack the whip on Carmel Halders blamed for the latest spate of attacks on indigenous farmers and livestock keepers in the county. Speaking at a funeral of former stabbed, death, stabbed to death by suspect non local hardest in Kirumbi, Voi, over the weekend, Governor Granton Samboja faulted national administration officials for presiding over what he said was outright violation of the human rights of locals. Locals have in the recent months decried invasion of their farms by herders and with firearms and now are demanding for the revocation of grazing rights granted to all non locals herders. Now we cross over to Botswana where after Kenya recently upheld its own anti-homosexuality laws, Botswana could decriminalize gay sex on Tuesday when its high court is due to rule in a landmark case being watched across Africa. Homosexual acts are outlawed in Botswana and it's one of Africa's most stable democratic nations under the country's penal code of 1965. Unnamed applicant in challenging two sections 
is challenging two sections of the code that threaten offenders with a jail sentence of up to seven years. Last month, Kenya's High Court refused to scrap laws criminalizing homosexuality, dealing a blow to the country's gay community that rippled across a continent where homophobia is rife. Gay rights organizations had hoped Kenya would follow in the footsteps of African nations like Angola or the or those further afield like India and end decades of, of old laws which criminalize gay sex. And now matters education. The secondary school heads are convening in Mombasa for their annual conference from Monday amid the raging controversy on the new curriculum. The more than 8,000 8, head teachers will be meeting at the Kenya School of Revenue Administration in Nyali under the Secondary School Heads Association. The association chairman Indi Muli Hai said among issues to be discussed in this year's meeting is the competence-based curriculum CBC introduced by the Ministry of Education as as well as underfunding in public secondary schools by the national government. The Kenya National Union of Teachers, NAT Secretary General Wilson Session, is strongly opposed to the new curriculum, arguing that teachers were not adequate, adequately involved in its development. Kai said they will also discuss challenges facing the implementation of the National Education Integration System, NEMIS, the online students' registration service. And lastly, hoteliers operating in the Masai Mara Game Reserve are recording increased bookings thanks to a shift in the migration pattern of what beast to Kenya from neighboring Tanzania. The famed migration kicked off earlier than usual this year with con conservationists and ecologists pointing at the change in weather patterns for the latest phenomenon. The wild beast migration, described as one of the seven modern wonders of the world, involves mainly wild beast and zebras crossing to and from the Serengeti National Park in an in neighboring Tanzania. The wild beast migration spectacle normally begins in mid-June and continues to September. But this year, the NAS started their long trek at the end of the last month, which is linked to prolonged dry weather that has reduced pastures in Tanzania's northern Serengeti, prompting the animals to cross to Kenya. The plains are already flooded with thousands of wild beasts, much to the delight of the lions, cheetahs, leopards, and hyenas. You're now up to speed with Y254 News Highlights. We'll be taking a very short break, and when we come back, it's time we talk about Discussion Monday, where we'll be looking at the political drumbeats that have begun and have been continuing since the general election in 2017. And the question is, should we have a such politics at such a time with only three years to go? Keep it Y254. We take a very short break. Do not go too far. Y254, imagine. And 
And every girl want to move slowly kati kati. Kati, kati kati kati, kati. Every girl want to move slowly kati kati. Kati, kati kati kati, kati. Yo kasa. Mm, Safi Kabisa, you know what it is. This Tuesday from 7.30 p.m. Myself, Mika, and of course, Vivian Degua on the bus. Yes, and we'll be having a pencil artist with us. And I just to mention, this is one of the best pencil artists we've hosted on this show. So you mm -hmm. cannot afford to miss it. Do not miss it. Yeah. Chuchuma, chuchuma, chuchuma. Dakaki uno ni ki chuchuma. Hey, chuchuma, chuchuma, chuchuma. Dakaki uno ni ki chuchuma. Hey, chuchuma, maga chuchuma. Dakaki uno ni ki chuchuma. Hey, chuchuma, maga chuchuma. Dakaki uno ni ki chuchuma. Yo casa. Y254 Imagine me thanks for keeping us company if you just tuned in this is why 254 discussion monday tonight we will be looking at the political drum beats that have been ongoing with only three years to go and we have our politicians here and they are trying to drum up support and the question is should we be having politi uh, politics at such a time i'm speaking to ngonjiri karuki he's a political analyst how are you ngonjiri uh, thank you very much Hilary, for having me tonight you're welcome. Yes, we have had uh, a long weekend mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, traversing three counties, mm -hmm. or is it four counties? That is uh, Nairobi, Vika, Moranga, mm -hmm. up to Kirinyaga. All right. In yes. these four counties that you're traversing with it, uh, were it, were they political issues or something personal? Of course, we have uh, what we call public opinion on the ground. Mm -hmm. This is basically what people feel and the attitudes that uh, the citizenry have towards the government. All right. Yes. Now, we have only three years to go. We had the general election in 2017. Uh, those who won, won. But now we have groups of people moving around, uh, politicking. Yes, yes. And our president has been very undermined. Let's work. Yes. Uh, Times for... Uh, Politics will come, yeah. but that has not been happening. Uh, you should be having this. You, you see, what we have been having is basically two groups. That is the Kieleweke and the Tangatanga. Tanga -tanga. Mm -hmm. The Kieleweke team is a team that claims to be the mouthpiece mm -hmm. of uh, His Excellency Uhuru Mwikai Kenyatta, right. while the case is otherwise. The president has not given anybody a job to be his spokesperson. All right. On the other hand, we have the Tangatanga -tanga team, which is drumming up support for the Deputy President William Samoy Ruto. Mm -hmm. And in that case, uh, then perception has it that these guys mm -hmm. are campaigning early. So let us try to dissect these two issues. That is the Kieleweke factor and the Tangatanga -tanga factor. Number one, the Tangatanga -tanga factor mm -hmm. becomes a nuisance when we have members of parliament that uh, are following the deputy president to each and every corner of this country. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's a freedom of movement. Mm -hmm. We must be careful because they also have their constituencies. During weekends right. is uh, an opportune time to meet with the electorate right. and go and uh, hear their concerns, attend barriers and water views. Mm -hmm. But these MPs have defied the natural call, which is why they went and seek a mandate from the people. Right. So I think that uh, as long as we continue having leaders who are not going to their constituencies on weekends, mm -hmm. perhaps what we should be talking about, because the deputy president is a national figure and uh, he's the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, he can move to any corner as he wishes. Right. But at least those adjutants, that is the MPs in the Tangatanga -tanga team mm -hmm. should go slow because mm -hmm. the deputy president has got his team. 
there is a, if he's going to uh, Moranga, for example, let the member of parliament who is the host, mm -hmm. let the neighboring member of parliament also come. Let the governor be there, the women representative, the senator also be there. But now, when we have somebody coming all the way from Isioro to Moranga, mm -hmm. uh, then that one becomes a campaign. All right. On the other hand, the Kieleweke team is advancing a narrative uh, that look, the deputy president is disrespecting the president mm -hmm. while we have not had the president complaining of his deputy. Okay. So we get a Kieleweke team that is trying to control the perception that, look, if you don't do the line, All right. then come 2022, we'll not grant you what you want. Okay. So the Kieleweke team is taking advantage and capitalizing on the president's silence All right. up, uh, upon his deputy moving around and using that opportunity to advance an agenda. All right. In a short term, I would, uh, I would label that Kieleweke team as agents of deceit. On the other hand, the Tangatanga team, mm -hmm. I would label them as, uh, as uh, empty rhetorics. All right. Yes. But now, uh, you just said the president and the deputy are together. It's only the groups, the groups, the, Kita, the Tangatanga and Kieleweke, they, they are the one who are bringing the perception that there is no unity. But then, would you say, because we have not seen that, would you say the Jubilee House is divided? Remember, we have a government that was elected on a Jubilee ticket. And that the majority is, of... Yes, that comprises of the executive and uh, each and every body that is within the executive. Then we have a party, the political party, Jubilee. All right. Remember, Jubilee has never held any grassroots elections ever since it was started. We only had interim chairman, we only had interim uh, county chairman, interim organizing secretaries, what have you, what have you. We have never had elections from the grassroots. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the architecture of the Jubilee Party, I can see a problem because politics of realignment, as J Donald J. Dalton, a political scientist, would uh, infer in his book, Citizen Politics, mm -hmm. are somehow complex. And when the citizens' and when the citizens' interests are not captured in the political alignments mm -hmm. that get into the elections, then Yes, the candidate that they like would, in a high probability, win that election. Mm -hmm. But the people won't have their hearts within that party. So what is happening in Jubilee mm -hmm. is that it is a party that has a very nice office along Tangani. <laughs> it is a party that has a secretary general. Mm -hmm. It is a party that has an interim chair. It is a party that has not. Mm -hmm. A vice chairman, I don't even know who is the chairman of Jubilee. I think he is not uh, active at all. After he resigned, we, yes. We don't have county representatives. We don't have constituency representatives. We don't have ward representatives. And on the various occasions that I have spoken, even within this state broadcaster, I've always said, let the Jubilee party hold its primaries. Uh, no, not primaries, but uh, grassroots elections. Actually, with all these attributes, yes. is Jubilee Party strong enough? Will that, it last? That, that is where I'm coming to. Without a very nice foundation as a political party, mm -hmm. then you are bound to fail. And the only cure, mm -hmm. and I'm happy because uh, I saw the Secretary General of Jubilee uh, 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 respond to such concerns when he said that they are going to start a political party academy and also hold elections. So for me, mm -hmm. as a young public intellectual, I would wish to have a country that has two or very few strong political parties mm -hmm. that are built on ideologies. All right. So that when there will come a time, perhaps I want to seek the mandate of the people, mm -hmm. I will have certain beliefs and I will align myself to a certain political party because I believe 
in its traditions. Mm -hmm. But the case is otherwise. All right. Yes. Now, uh, we are just speaking of the Jubilee Party, but just recently, actually over the weekend, we saw the former CS for Sports HSA now supporting uh, Honorable Musali Mudavati, that is ANC now. They are now uh, with uh, Cleopa Malala, the Senator for Netkaramega. So they are supporting now the ANC. And they put it clearly, we want to be there yes. on 20, uh, when 2022 comes in. Yes. Now, the question is, they have been claiming the Jubilee House is campaigning. Yes. And specifically the Tanga Tanga team. They have yes. been like, these people are campaigning. Yes. But now they have joined the wagon. Should the narrative change? Uh, let me say that, uh, of course, politics is a game of interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is perception that works in the politics. Mm -hmm. Facts really works. All right. So when you have a guy like Rashid, a chaser, who was a very close adjutant of the deputy president. Right. And not once he has declared his intentions to support the deputy president in 2022. Mm -hmm. When you have him decamp to Mudavadi's ANC party, then you see a situation of, you know, he's, uh, he comes from uh, Western. Mm -hmm. You see a situation whereby the Western people want to make an in-house overhaul. They want to have a rejuvenation mm -hmm. of their own community. Because when you look at uh, uh, the political traditions of the Luya people, I think they are the second majority in the country, mm -hmm. but have never been united. Mm -hmm. Every time that we have an elections, ever since the days of Kijana or Malwa, right. they are always looked at as a swing vote. So when I see them, Align, when I see a Chesa align himself to ANC, mm -hmm. then I see an in-house rebuild. But again, mm -hmm. we must speak and speak loudly to shun any political, empty political rhetoric that is happening in this country, especially at this epoch. Because we are three years to the next general election. Yeah. When I look at advanced democracies, Hillary, Right. And these are countries like the United States. Okay. And do a comparative political study. I get my country okay. as a phenomenon. I, I have never understood what happens in my country. We, are, we have finished an electioneering period, but people have begun to realign themselves again. No work can Politics happen never at such an environment. Mm -hmm. However, Politicians are paid to politic. All right. But what I always, and I will always be against, is those empty political rhetorics. Let, if people are going to traverse various regions of this country, let them go and build a school. Mm -hmm. Let them go and build a laboratory. Right. Let them go and build a bridge. That is what we want. Mm -hmm. But this is a politics of doing press conferences, answering who, I don't know who is answering who, mm -hmm. those are malignant to our economy. Right. And we cannot wish uh, to have a, a heightened political temperature. So what I would wish to see, mm -hmm. if leaders that are given the mandate by the people right. to work, let them work, even if they are, going to, they are traversing various regions of this country, mm -hmm. let them stop the 2022 narrative because i can assure you the people on the ground are bitter True. what they want to see is development and they want they of, of course they already know who fits the bill right. and who will not even be mm -hmm. a multiple choice for them All right. so what we want now as a country is development and development Nothing else. Nothing else. Now, as a political analyst, we saw uh, the opposition, one of the opposition leaders, that is Kalonzo uh, Musyoka, joining with um, Gideon Moy. Yes. And now it's like they want to work together. He has his party. Yes. Gideon has Kanu. Mm -hmm. Now, are we seeing a unity between Kanu and uh, Wiper? <laughs> okay. In politics, anything is possible because 
we normally say that uh, there are no permanent enemies Alrighty. in the politics. And who could be the uh, flag bearer? Uh, look at it this way. I saw Gideon Moy yesterday was invited, mm -hmm. I think, in Machako, in uh, Ukambani. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a signal. And as you have seen, when the handshake happened mm -hmm. in March, uh, in Nine. March, uh, between the president and Raila Odinga. It was 9th March. Yes. Mm -hmm. There was something called the Building Bridges Initiatives. True. An amorphous group. Mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, has no provision in the constitution. Yes, we agreed as a country to affirm peace and uphold peace. But this Building Bridges Initiative Group already has an answer to what they wanted to achieve. Which is? And like you will see, mm -hmm. the, the means let me not say the end will justify the means. The means mm -hmm. will justify the end. Mm -hmm. They want a referendum. All right. And in this referendum, they have already given themselves an interior mm -hmm. of what will happen. Mm -hmm. And already I know in their minds, mm -hmm. they already know who mm -hmm. can be the prime minister, mm -hmm. who are the two deputy prime ministers, All right. and uh, who are the others in the top cream of that leadership. All right. When you had Kalonzo Musioka during his father's burial, I think, mm -hmm. uh, lament that nitakuwa mtu wa mkono wa uhuru Kenyatta. Right. That was a signal that we will do this. And by view of the handshake is that it has always been good. But one thing mm -hmm. that people have maybe not uh, taken into account is that Raila Odinga is a smart politician and what he did, mm -hmm. he did was what we call a cost-benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. That yes, I will agree to join you but and I will agree to moot my political activities. Mm -hmm. But at the end of it, I'll have something. I have something. Mm -hmm. An open check. All right. So, already they know that Uhuru Kenyatta is the only person, the president is the only person mm -hmm. who holds their political future on his palm. Right. Because if he's, he decides to support the referendum and as the political spokesperson of the Mount Kenya region, mm -hmm. then chances are that perception in the Mount Kenya region mm -hmm. will shift to that direction. Mm -hmm. So Kalonzo has seen a leeway that if Uhuru supports the referendum and in the guise of inclusivity, then it is going to be a deal done. And right. in that case, the deputy president who depends on the, on the Mount Kenya region mm -hmm. will have been fixed. So, they already, I know, mm -hmm. there is already planning. Now, and, uh, and, 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 and the politicians will never sleep. I know they, they, they always think about their political future. So when you see someone like uh, Gideon Moy visiting Kalonzo Musioka, mm -hmm. this is a gesture that the two of them could, in for a, could be in for a coalition, mm -hmm. and especially if what is being talked as a change of the governance system would, mm -hmm. fruit, would, would be a reality. Now, at this point, would you say, because it has been denied time and again since its inception, would you say the handshake was a sabotage to one of the politicians? The handshake was not a sabotage to one of the politicians. Mm -hmm. The handshake was a pact uh, that will be remembered by generations to come. Mm -hmm. That two antagonizing sides can shelve their political interest mm -hmm. and join together for the sake of this country. But did they sh shelve their interest anyway because we are seeing them trying to contest in other means? I, I'm saying you asked me whether it was a sabotage. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, of course, in between, mm -hmm. there are people who have vested interests. Right. And as you can see, the referendum issue, mm -hmm. it is not a miracle, Hillary, mm -hmm. that now, his Excellency Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta is a good person 
to the NASA people. Mm -hmm. It's not a miracle. Mm -hmm. So they have what they want to advance. All right. And this is a political card setting of 2022. What has changed? This is the same president whom they competed with. Mm -hmm. And ask yourself, and I even invite Kenyans to ask themselves, mm -hmm. why? would they be opposed to the deputy president right. and yet play darling to the president? These are about political interests. Exactly. The president has had, had good intentions mm -hmm. when he shook hands with the late Honorable Rero Odinga. Mm -hmm. So we are going to experience interesting times ahead. Again, before I forget, yesterday something happened in my county, Muranga County. Right in a church in uh, Kandara constituency, whereby a member of the Kieleweke team mm -hmm. got a hostile ground in a church. Mm -hmm. First of all, let us not break the oracle. Remember, this is a holy place. It's a place where we are supposed to go and worship True. and go on our knees before our maker. Mm -hmm. We are not supposed to go and do any kind of chaos. But the politicians the claim it is the only time they could have a moment with their uh, electorates. And, and remember, remember, mm -hmm. the church has a position because the church is the moral compass of any society. They must fit in the rightful place in the society. So the church must not allow leaders that are sparking divisions amongst a peaceful people, mm -hmm. a podium. They must not be given a podium. If somebody is given a microphone and they start digressing to division and politics of hate mm -hmm. and empty political rhetorics, All right. let them be stopped. And I'm happy, of, but, but, but not, not, not to support hooliganism. I'm happy that we have seen it on several occasions certain leaders being stopped from speaking. True. Because those are politics of division. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. As we come to an end, are you for the referendum? And do you support the ongoing politics? Wow. Am I for the referendum? What I can be able to say, at least for this moment, mm -hmm. is that uh, a referendum could be inevitable at the backdrop of the circumstances mm -hmm. that our economy is going through. Of course, there are discussions of reducing the number of members of the August House. Mm -hmm. There is also a discussion of reducing the wage bill. Exactly. That could be the discourse that I, as Karyoki Ngonjiri, would want to be involved in because, in a way, is a discourse that credits Wanjiko. Okay. Any other discussion okay. uh, that seeks to create positions for people, mm -hmm. I would not be in for that. So what I would advise, yes, we are talking of inclusivity. And uh, there is that discourse of the expansion of the executive. Mm -hmm. But is it only the, the expansion of the executive that would cure the problems that are bedeviling our country? Mm -hmm. No. Let me give you an example. Right. And this is uh, a problem that has been tested some years ago. I think mm -hmm. over a century ago, uh, is it a, not a century? Of a half a century ago, right. in the current day Germany, mm -hmm. there was a country then mm -hmm. known as the Weimar Republic, mm -hmm. whereby power was concentrated at the center and there was no checks and balances. Mm -hmm. The Nazis were given all the powers by the people. All right. And the fruition of that was the fall of the Weimar Republic, that is, in the wake of the end of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. So, let us not have a situation whereby we have very strong powerhouse okay. at the top, and then we have a centrifugal forces of power are concentrated at the same center. Because 
in a way. Mm -hmm. When a prime minister is in government and when we have a president, mm -hmm. then that one means that, that that is one government. Again, we don't want to have a situation whereby a representative of the people comes from parliament because in such a case, mostly, mm -hmm. even in advanced democracies, the president mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is in charge of the foreign policy All right. and the prime minister Our is in is charge up. of the domestic policy. Mm -hmm. So we want direct representation. If it is inclusivity, we have positions of cabinet secretaries. All right. Let us not satisfy an ego of few people All and right. sacrifice the future of our country. If we don't sacrifice for our country, All we right. shall be the sacrifice. All right. Thank you so much for your sentiments and many thanks back home for keeping us company. He has been my guest, uh, Karyuki Ngonjuri. And now coming up next is why Mashariki ICDG TSK is very much ready. So keep it Y254. Have yourselves a good night. My name is Deleva Hilary. Thank you.